Hi, my name's Mark, one of the pastors here at Trillium. Dodgeball has been in the news recently. Well, for one thing, dodgeball seems to be enjoying a resurgence. I noticed at my local Y that there's now adult dodgeball being offered. But it was also in the news recently because at a Congress, a big conference in Vancouver a few weeks ago, a paper was presented that said that dodgeball was a tool of oppression. Who would have ever thought it? Dodgeball, a tool of oppression. Now, I remember playing dodgeball as a, as a, in public school and in high school. It was, it was a fun game. It, it didn't seem to be particularly torturous to me. Uh, but obviously, to some people, it has uh, implications to it. The, this paper said it was a, an instrument of violence and intimidation from athletic people to non-athletic people, from n jocks to nerds, in more common parlance. And I, and I, I got thinking of, about uh, the possibility of this. There was an, a, a, a radio call-in show on CBC a few weeks ago. There was uh, a, a discussion around dodgeball, and people were calling in, and some people had some pretty traumatic experiences around dodgeball. I mean, they were tor tortured by it. Other people called in and, and were worried about us trying to bubble wrap our kids and protect them from all kinds of hurtful or potential unjust situations. It got me thinking as I'm listening to this radio program about dodgeball and people's hurt from it, about a, a friend that uh, my wife Sally and I met when we were in Florida. In fact, it was a friend of a friend. We were down visiting my wife's friend and she introduced us to someone who lived in her apartment block. And this woman's name was Alice and she was 90 years old. And what made her particularly interesting to us was that she was a survivor of Auschwitz. Auschwitz, the, the, the biggest concentration camp in Nazi Germany during World War II. Millions of people died there. This Jewish girl and her family were picked up sometime in 43, I think it was, 1943, and they were ultimately shipped to Auschwitz. And when they got there, her, uh, Alice and her younger sister were immediately separated from the older members of her family, like her parents and grandparents. She never saw them again. They uh, uh, were assigned to jobs, her, Alice and her sister, because they were young, they were seen as useful by the prison authorities in the running of the camp. And, and Alice came up with the idea of even volunteering for more work. And she convinced her sister to volunteer with her. And that's how they survived Auschwitz. She became particularly useful to the running of the prison. And when she uh, ultimately was released from Auschwitz at the end of World War II, she immigrated to the United States, to New York City. She got married, had a family. She became a top-notch fashion designer in New York City and, and ultimately retired to, to Florida to, to enjoy her those last years. What, what I f found fascinating about Alice is that she uh, lived through Auschwitz, but she was not defined by it that Alice had gone literally to live in hell on earth and yet she had triumphed over it. There was a resiliency in this woman that I found in particularly impressive and inspiring even. And this woman had lived through hell and yet she was on the other side of it and she was not in any way ultimately defined by what it had done to her and her family. And I was thinking, uh, uh, Alice's story compared to the people who were commenting about their torture and dodgeball. Something's just seemed out of balance to me. I'm not judging other people's pain or, or the hurt of their lives. I, I don't mean to judge them on the radio program or yours or mine even. But something just seemed out of balance because here was this woman who had lived through hell on earth and yet had triumphed from it. Her resilient spirit had got her over the line and she was able to move forward in life in a powerful way. And then there are people who are stuck in the unjust circumstances of their youth. And, and I realized in that moment that Perhaps the greatest gift we can have in life given to us or the greatest gift we can find in life is resiliency, to be resilient. Because we're all going to experience injustice and, and hardship in life. We're all going to have the hurts of the world done to us. And the question really is, are we going to get stuck in them or are we, are we going to get moving? When, when Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow after me, he's saying, embrace your hurt. Don't run from it. Embrace the injustice and the hardship of life. Don't worry about it because there is a spirit, a resilient spirit within you that can get you to the other side of it. So get moving.